An important class of widgets allow the user to choose one or more from a set of options, either to choose a command or a value. These are either called buttons or menus. Menus usually have a set of items displayed on the screen at the same time. Menus can either be always displayed on the screen, or they can pop up when a certain mouse button is pressed. After choosing an item in a menu, the user might be required to make another choice using an additional menu called a submenu. If there are too many items to be displayed at once, the menu might also be scrolled. Here are various kinds of menus. Two item pie menu, and since there's only two items, each item gets half of the circle, so it's very easy to make a selection from one of them. And you see it echoed on the mousey display. Um, they're both items are very close to the cursor. Now, when I go and select the lower menu, it pops up this huge pie menu of the country name. Now, each of these labels have to be pushed out by the layout policy so that they don't overlap. And uh, while it takes up a lot of screen space, still each of the menu items is very close to the cursor. Now, the more items you have, the smaller width each one gets but you can still get more angular precision by moving the cursor out further and further as the wedge gets bigger and bigger. What this menu is, is a scrolling, a spiral pie menu that only displays a maximum of eight items. And you can scroll to more items by spinning the cursor around the center of the menu. And this little graphic here tells you that there are more items to the left or clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, you can make a selection, pop up the submenu, and decide that you don't want that submenu, and pop back a level by pressing the middle button down and releasing. When I click the button, it pops up a hue bright or hue saturation submenu. Now, the hue is the direction, and the saturation is the distance that I move out. So as I move around this, it shows me the color I've selected in the menu center select one of those fonts, and up pops a submenu showing the different styles of that font. Now, I move in one of the directions to select that style, and the distance that I move selects the point size of that font. So as I move in and out, the point size changes and is displayed in the menu center. What happens here is that when you poke out, it makes a flexible lever that the further out you go, the more flexible it becomes, and you have much finer control over the number. Now, when I move the mouse over one of the items, it pops up. And these different items are mouse sensitive, and I can click on them to see a definition. And naturally, same as with the text menus, I can click on the background here to pop everything up and see all of the buttons at once. These pictures here have embedded graphical links to the people. I can click on their head to get a definition. Of course, all window managers must provide the user some way of controlling the windows. The commands that are available typically include changing which window is in view, changing the size of windows, selecting which window is getting keyboard typing, and shrinking a window down to its icon. Here are some examples of window manager commands. Tape it to overlap the mousey window. I can demonstrate the up and down arrows, and they change the depth of this window. This, the down will push it to the bottom of the pile of windows, and the up arrow will bring it to the top. And those are very natural, intuitive uh, directions for those functions. Uh, now, the eye here is a visual pun. This turns the window into an icon. And I have the same menu on the icon for uh, consistency's sake that will turn it back into a window. Now, uh, on the submenus, there is a grab submenu for grabbing a corner of an, the window or an edge and stretching it to somewhere. Now, I can grab, say, the lower edge and it gives me this rubber band feedback telling me where the lower edge will go when I click the button. I hope you've enjoyed this survey of widgets. 
Although most systems today use only a few common techniques, we can expect novel ways of manipulating data in the future using new input techniques and devices, such as multi-cut screens, data gloves, speech recognition, and gesture recognition. As these begin to supplement and even replace the mouse, new forms of widgets will be needed. So there is plenty of exciting work ahead for widget designers. Thank you.